So welcome everyone, welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is March the 11th and the topic for this evening is You Are Not You. So why why this topic? Why this this um why the this particular topic is I actually want to talk about mind control and I want to preface with um, my presentation with just saying that um, is I'm giving the the the, the presentation and and the, it goes in a certain flow so. It may upset some people, may or may not, um, but um, I just want you to all to to know that there is a a reason why I have the the, the presentation this way is um, and and if you can just if if any part of it triggers you then um, maybe wait a little bit. I would res hopefully be able to resolve everything by the end of the, the, the presentation or not. If not, then uh, please do let me know do, and, and I'll be able to um, hopefully resolve and answer all your questions and put everybody back into a, um, I would say, more positive frame of mind. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's begin. And I want to actually start off by um, telling you or reading you part of a story. And um, the story is from the Bible. And so let me just get to the, the source. So this is Genesis 3 from the Bible. I forgot which version of the Bible this is, but um, I think that the details um, does not matter too much. It can be any version of the, the, the Bible. The words may be a little different, but the, the gist of it would be um, quite the same. So this is Genesis 3. And so Genesis 1 is, you know, God creating the, 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 the universe. And then by, by Genesis 3, human beings have already been created. And there is Adam and Eve. And now this is, so here we are. So now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed thick leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the men, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? 
have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave one, that she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring. And here he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pain in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I command you, you must not eat off it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful to toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us. Knowing good and evil, he must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. And so this is the version of our humanity's history, according to the Bible. And for the longest time, that is actually the only version that we know. And, and for and there may might have been, you know, some intermittent rumors of a different story, but by and large, that is really the Bible story was the one that we were trained to accept. And actually, I would like to give you another version of this story, a version from that is um, very different about the, the history of humanity. So um, the history of humanity it actually goes, it's um, actually, let me just uh, sit back properly before I, I continue. The um, history of humanity actually started far away from earth, all the way to a, um, a constellation, the Orion constellation. And in a, uh, within the uh, constellation of Orion, there are actually different races, several races there, and, and they all um, by and large live together or live close to each other fairly peacefully. There, there may have been some um, disagreements every now and then. However, they, the, uh, the, the race, the races that live um, around the Orion constellation by and large lived in peace for a very long time. And, um, and so because peace has been with them for such a long time that they, even though they are very 
um, high level in terms of consciousness, they are not very good at things like defending themselves. And so when a very different race of um, people called the reptilians, and when I say reptilians, I don't, I'm not saying that there is only one race that's called reptilians, actually. Within the reptilians, there are different races. Some of them we know, some of them we don't even know. Um, for example, we've all heard of the Dracos. There's also the uh, Alpha Draconians. Um, I think there's something called the 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 Songos as well. I'm I'm not sure. There there are four or five of them that we we know of, or, um, and we have interacted with. Um, however, these reptilians were um, they were even if you if, if even for the reptilians themselves they they have no idea um, where they came from because they they have ability to jump timelines they can actually um, they are able to go from actually take a look at be able to find um, in different, in different um, timelines or periods of time, be able to find um, a, let's say a particular period of time, for example, the Orion um, constellation where they know that though they don't have a lot of, um, they don't have a lot of competition. So they were actually able to, to locate that, that constellation and actually be able to just jump into that, join their, their timeline, even though they came from a different timeline, most likely. So, so the, the, the reptilians in a group um, of different races of reptilians, they were able to really um, battle with the, the, the Orion inhabitants and the Orion inhabitants include but um, I, some of them I know, some of them I don't, I don't know all of them. Uh, there are Syrians, there are Pleiadians, there are um, Arcturians, um, and I believe there are Andromedans there as well. Um, I think there are also Vagans and Nordics, I'm not sure. And there are definitely Lyrans. Actually, Lyra is, is one of the, the, the more um, major ones there, um, of the races there. And so there was a big battle between them and, and there were lots of casualties on both sides, millions of, maybe even more than millions, maybe multi tens of millions of, um, of, of souls from, from both sides of the, the battle really perished and during this battle. And so they, they it ended up that um, even though the, the even though the the Orion constellation the, the their inhabitants they're not very good at it but because there are some of them that are really high um, vibration and they were able to they actually have um, ability to create weapons that was able to to hold the, the reptilians at, at bay. And, and so they were able to um, eventually, after a long protracted period of war, eventually started to, um, to, to, to have battle with the, the reptilians until some of them ran and they hit and they hide, they hide out on earth. So they, they went to Earth because they, they, they found out that Earth at that time, the, the, the inhabitants there are fairly peaceful. And actually some of the inhabitants there were Lyrans. A lot of the Lyrans, they want to, they, they went to Earth because they are not the Lyrans. It's a race of people and they, even though they are um, fairly 
high in vibration, but they um, have very little ability to defend themselves. So um, I think at, at uh, beginning of the, the Orion Wars, they ran to Earth and they were hiding out there. And so when the when some of the reptilians got to Earth, they were able to overpower a lot of the Lyrans and they were able to um, kill a lot of them to the extent that they actually was able to occupy Earth and in and and actually made Earth their home. And so the they um, so what they did with the Lyrans is they killed off a lot of the the adults. They killed them off, and they actually took the the the, the children, and they started to um, do. They started to um, do some. They did some genetical experiments on the the what's left of the Lyrans, um, who are actually children, and they really be cannot defend themselves. So they are completely um, being experimented on by the, by, by, the, um, by the reptilian force there. And so the reptilian force, what they did was they genetically modified the Lyrans. They took the bodies of the Lyrans and they were able to modify them. Um, I need to... Sorry. Sorry, I want to make sure everybody is muted out. Before I continue, so what they did was um, they experimented on the, the Lyrans and they first created one set of um, I think for practical for, for all practical purpose is really they are slaves. So they created from using the, the bodies of the Lyrans, they were able to create a, a slave race. So they use they have the slave, the slaves um, just you know do all the, the heavy um, lifting for them. And and they actually the they were so happy with the you know how the the slaves were that they um, the the slaves the when so they used the slaves to um, dig up minerals from the earth and the slaves were doing so well that they actually took some of the slaves and took them to a different location where. The, the reptilians were actually living there um, in, you know, really, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a villa for them, like a, a summer home for them. So they, they were live, so they took some of the, 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 the slaves and they put them in their garden, which is the place that they live, which is really the garden of Eden. So the garden of Eden is, the name or um, one of the names that they give to this, the place that the, the reptilians were living. And so when you, when, when the Bible said that Adam and Eve were there, Adam and Eve was actually the, some of the slaves that they put there. And when the Bible talked about the, 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 the Lord God is actually the reptilians because the reptilians were the Lord gods of Adam and Eve because they are the ones who created them. Well, created in quotations because they actually, they were Lyrans, but they were genetically modified by the, the, the reptilian race who called themselves the, the Lord God. And so, and um, what happened was on earth at that time, there were actually, um, besides the Lyrans, besides the, the reptilians, there also another race there, there are several other races there, but one of them 
um, was the, the Lemurians. And the Lemurians are kind of cousins of the Lyrans. And so when the, the Lemurians um, heard or found out that what's happening um, within uh, to to their to their cousins, they um, they started. I would say they snuck. They they really stealthily went into um, quote unquote the Garden of Eden to talk to the 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 humans, the the slaves, the Adam and Eve there. And so when the Bible said that is the snake. The snake is actually symbolic. Snake, if you look at a, uh, a lot of the symbol, for example, if you look at the, the um, um, caduceus of the of medicine, it's, it's kind of um, a snake as well. So snake is actually symbolic of a certain kind of knowledge. So a snake is actually they're actually referring to the Lemurians. The Lemurians went and gave certain knowledge to the slave race that was in the Garden of Eden and let them know that, you know, this is uh, what is being done to you is wrong. And they kind of told them about all that. And they actually talked to the, the, the female of the, of the slave race there first and then the the slave and then the eve kind of told the the men so that's how it was so all of this is really cold in the bible and the 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 snake according to the bible was wrong because from the perspective of the reptilians um what the Lemurians did was wrong. So they they made them they made the Lemurians and the knowledge that they gave to Adam and Eve to be evil is the you know Satan is is doing that. So so everything was actually completely distorted. So that is really the the beginning of. Um, mind control because we never or i i should say that uh, well for well, i would never heard about the, the this other part of the story about the the, um, the orion wars i have not heard about that the this the um the snake was actually symbolic of a a different race the lemurians talking to the talking to them, the slave race there. So this, this version of the story, we didn't really hear of for the longest time. And it is really within the last, I would say the last hundred of years, um, maybe even less, maybe even more recent than that, maybe even 50 years that we actually started these, these this version of the story started to be channeled, started, there, there are different um, other races um, that started talking to the humans in, in either through channeled material or um, through different ways that the, this version of the story started to be, become I wouldn't say known, but you no, know, very few people, still relatively few people know about this, even to this day, very few people know. But at least it's starting to come out more and more now. So um, what I'm trying to, to say is that mind control, this is mind control and it's been, it's, it's been done, it's been, and it's still being done to us since the time, since time, like since the, 
the Bible was you know, how many thousands, um, at least one or two thousands years ago, maybe even earlier started. So all the stories um, has is actually stories that are very distorted and one-sided where the good people are being portrayed as bad and the, the bad ones are actually being um, portrayed as you know the, the, the powerful and good ones that's as being good to us human beings. But actually it is mind control at its best. And we are actually all, um, whether we believe in, in the Bible or not, um, I think if you look at all the, uh, maybe, uh, the other, either religions or the other cultures, I, I know that from, from my own culture, from the, the, the Chinese culture, um, there's a lot of different versions of um, what deities are. And I actually know of one particular way of, 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 I would say, social engineering. For example, Confucianism is, is um, a big part of uh, with the, the, the Chinese culture. And Confucianism, Confucianism is um, a certain way of being that was introduced into the Chinese society. And the reason it was introduced is tot was totally to control behavior. So there's a lot of mind control from all different cultures. There is social engineering is maybe one, one way of putting it, but, in, but it is actually mind control. Whatever the reason is, mind control had been um, used on a lot, uh, uh, the major majority of the population. And so that's why I mentioned that you are not you, meaning that we are not who we are because um, we were actually totally different. We were actually Lirans. Our body was Lirans, but we were, our, our history were totally um, cut off. We were cut off from who we were and we were conditioned to think and behave in a completely different way. So we are actually, we are not who we are. And all this was for an agenda. And so, so why, why, why this agenda? Um, if you look at the the newer or, or the, the the other version, the the non Bible version of the story that I have mentioned, is that we uh, the 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 reptilians were by the time they came to Earth, they. They have gone through a lot of, um, they fought a lot of wars. And by the time they got to, by the time they got to earth, they do not have enough. They're not powerful or, or as, as a race, they were actually not, there's not enough of them to overpower the, the inhabitants that were already on earth at the time when they arrived. So instead of, of um, going out all out war with all of the inhabitants, they, they fought with some and they were able to suppress some of them. And they know that the, the, the best way forward is not to fight their way out because they don't have enough to continue on and on to fight and fight and fight. So, and because they, even though they, um, they, they, they are, for lack of a better term, they, they are still quite barbaric, but they have enough consciousness to know that um, 
our reality, that we are the one that actually created our own reality with our mind, with our consciousness. And that when they can control a people through their perception, they can actually control what the people can manifest for themselves. And, and they also know that even though they have genetically modified some of the, the, the Lyrans um, into, and to make them into a, a slave race for them. However, the, the genetic modification is only temporary. Consciousness itself, especially if the Lemurians were there to start to influence the consciousness of their, the, the, the genetically modified version of the Lyrans, the consciousness of the, the Lyrans will eventually be able to reverse any amount of genetic modification. So they knew all that. So they, they made a conscious choice that instead of, of um, continuing on with the genetic modifications, that they, the, the, um, the better way to do it or the more, um, the more efficient way of doing it is not manipulating our genes, but actually manipulating our consciousness. And they know full well that by controlling someone's perception of reality, they can control and, and they can control what they will manifest. So they use control and whatever it is that if they manage to control their perception. They can actually control the world they manifest and they can actually control even the body that they can manifest um, by perpetually perpetuating the, the mind control. They actually um, was able to make it so that our, our own um, consciousness kept the whatever genetic modification that they made on us, they, they kept it. That we ourselves, the, the, the consciousness of us, of the, the people that were mind controlled was able to prevent themselves from reversing the genetic modification. And they do this by, by instilling us with fear, by making sure that our consciousness was kept low. And when our consciousness was kept low, then they actually made us um, perpetuate the, the reality that they wanted us to be at, to keep at. So, and this is good news and bad news. The, the good news is that each and every human being, each and every one of us actually has all, has everything that within us, everything within us. We don't have to go outside to, to get that. We actually, everybody has all that we need within us to create the reality that we wish to experience. And we are only limited by our perception of what is possible we actually have that ability to reactivate our own DNA by our consciousness. And, that, and, and so if you look at all the things, um, like let me go back to the Bible um, when they mention all the things is, for example, they mentioned that um, So they managed to convince us that they managed to convince the women that uh, like childbearing is going to be painful. They managed to convince us that we will desire our husband and that we will let our husband rule over us. So they managed to convince all of us, us about that. And they actually managed to convince um, the, the, the men that we have to work hard. We have to work hard in order to make a living. So that was really instilled into us that 
that there is nothing will come easy. You all have to, to sweat. You all have to work hard. And in terms of what they said to the, um, to the, the snake is that the snake and humanity is, is that we are actually, um, we, we try to crush one another. So that very symbolically is that we, we, as a human being, we don't like new ideas. We only stick to the old ideas because if you if you use the symbol that the snake really symbolizes knowledge, is that we are very. Um, we've been trained to not accept new ideas easily. So that's one way of making sure that we don't incorporate new ideas into our life and we, we won't be able to um, go like to, to, to learn fast in a short period of time that we actually, even if we, uh, it takes a long time for us to accept and come to terms with new ideas. So that's, that's part of all this is mind control. And when you look at all this mind control, this is what the, the I would say the, the, the reptilians has been trying to convince us of. And they were by far quite successful at it. And even if you look out the, um, look at the situation right now, is that we have been so conditioned to be, to listen to um, the authority. Authority being the government, being certain, um, certain people who, uh, who, who, who are deemed as expert to us. So these are the people that we, we would take their word rather than our own inner knowing. So that's how they manage to still trying to, to perpetuate that mind control. But of course, it's not working as well as they'd hoped for anymore because the, the the human collective as a whole decided that, you know, we're done with this. And this is also the, um, the other thing I want to mention is that all of this, what happened to during the Orion Wars, what happened during to the, uh, the Lyrans and the, all the slave the trade and all that, that, all that is, is really happened um, at a 3D level. At a 3D level, this is what happened. But if you look at it from consciousness point of view, is that yes, the reptilians um, at the 3D level, they, they were really taking advantage. They really played the, um, the role of a bad guy. And yes, there were the um, the bodies were Lyran bodies, and they they took the bodies and they actually um, genetically tried to genetically modify it, and with all the um, mind control and all that, uh, that is at a three D level. And at a higher dimension, it's understood differently because when you look at it at a soul level, there have been um the the Lyrans. The bodies were Lyrans, but the souls, um, the souls have the souls come and go. So even at a um a 3D level, even for the reptilians, the reptilians could have had a 
a Lyran soul in them. They could have had an Andromedan soul in them. So souls would go to different bodies and, and that's how it is. There is no such thing as if you are a Lyran, then only a soul that had been, uh, there's no specialized Lyran soul where the soul will always be in the Lyran body and that's that, there's no, no jumping around. There is lots of jumping around. Um, a Lyran soul would be like when they are in a Lyran body, it's a Lyran soul. But the next time around when the soul decides to leave this, this story and jump over to other, that soul can decide to go and jump into the, the reptilian side and play that game. And then vice versa as well, a reptilian soul may decide to, oh, I want to try being the, a Lyran and being a, a slave. Let's, um, let's do that. Let's jump in. And that's happening as well. So at a different, at a consciousness level, um, when we look at the two stories, whether the story of what the Bible told us and the, the story of um, the very different way from the point of view of the Lyrans, from those two stories is that it's, yes, it's a story. And from a soul point of view, um, neither of them are more real than the other. So what I'm trying to say is that consciousness is so, consciousness is everything. If, if you get nothing else from this, um, please don't, don't um, fall into the victim and in saying that, oh, I've been mind controlled. I, you know, this, this is it. I, I have to go fight and, and do all that. No, that's not the point of the story. Yes, there's mind control. However, um, once you know that you've been mind controlled, then when you know what is being done, then you can start to step away from that. You can start to choose to not succumb to the mind control anymore. You can choose to let go of all these ideas. They can tell you that, oh, you have to listen to your, your parents or you have to listen to experts. And you, once you know that that's a mind control tactic, you can choose to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to mm, listen to my gut feeling, listen to my inner guidance. I am not going to listen to um, some expert. So once you know that what's being done to you, that that is how they try to, how the reptilians try to control us, then it is really up to you. You are no longer a victim. You can choose otherwise. And the other thing to really get out of it is that your consciousness is so important. There is really nothing outside of our consciousness, nothing whatsoever. Our, our body is part of our consciousness. And because our body is part of our consciousness, when our consciousness choose to um, not experience illness, the body will adjust, will make adjustment so that your, your immune system will start to improve. And of course, you have to do other things to help your body along. You have to do, you have to go and, uh, you know, do some exercise. You have to make sure that you have nutritious food and not GMO food all those things, you have to treat your body nice and, and really work with your body. And if you work with your body, then your consciousness and your body 
is really one and the same. There is no, it's not two separate entity that you that you have to, you know, um, you have to convince your body. No, you don't have to convince your body. Once you know, and you know how to work with your body, then your body will reflect what you, you consciously choose. And so there is really nothing outside of our consciousness. We are the only one that is creating all that is good and all that is bad that we are experiencing them. We, uh, like the human collective, created all of the, the reptilians and also created all of the Lyrans that well, somehow cannot defend themselves. So this is all something that we created. So that's how powerful we are. We can actually, at a consciousness level, we choose to experience that. And now we are at the point where we choose to get out of that now. And we actually, you know, a lot of people mentioned that, well, I have to wake other people up because, you know, if, if there's enough of us, then, then we'll be able to, you know, stop the government and, and we can stop the, the, the cabal, we can stop the reptilians. And, and that's, that's not the, the case, is that we actually, are, we, each and every one of us, I mean, create our own reality. We create our own reality. We create our own experience. The idea that we have to, um, there has to be enough of us in order to you know, be able to um, be safe is actually not true. It's an illusion. We are, our consciousness create the reality that we experience and that it only takes us when we choose to be able to experience a different reality, it will start to happen. It may not happen right away. We may, um, there may be some discrepancy between what we choose and what we experience. However, that's because there are, we are in a co-created environment. However, even within this co-created environment, as long as we choose it for ourselves and we choose it in neutrality and we don't choose it because we hate, we, it's because every time you, you, you choose it because of fear, or because of a negative um, environment, it actually lowers your, your vibration. And when you can keep your, your consciousness and your vibration high, and you choose something, it will start to happen. And it will start to happen in very nuanced way. For example, um, I've actually had, had cases where I, like, I was, I kind of, um, when, when Franco mentioned that there's going to be um, a split between, you know, the people that are, are 3D and the people that are going into 5D, there's going to be a, a split in reality. I wasn't sure in my head, how is that going to be? Is there actually like a two different separate reality? And, and I th it's not, it's actually very subtle. All the realities is just one, it's in the same, we can see the other people. We can see the other people. However, they cannot see us. People that are in fifth dimension can see the 3D people, but the 3D people cannot see us. Meaning that even when they see us and even when they, they you know, interact with us, it's as though they, they can't see us, that we don't, um, what 
our behavior does not does not hmm, how should i say it is that for example if you if you're really in the fifth dimension and you are completely released and you're neutral about wearing uh, not wearing a mask and you walk into a place that needs you to wear a mask somehow you would be able to um manifest a reality where you just have to say oh i'm exempt and you won't get um bothered too much and even though you know you you there there are people that have a mask on or even two or three masks on at the same time they don't quite notice you they would be too busy in in their own environment minding their own business that they don't even see you so this is what i mean by um yes we are we are in the same reality you're still seeing some people and they're still living in um their own chosen reality however you are also living your own chosen reality within the same like seem to be in the same environment but you can see them but they don't really notice you very much they don't really interact with you much and as time goes on um there will be even less and less interaction between the two so that is really what's going on so if so when you choose a reality for yourself at first like you may see other people doing their own thing and and their own thing would be whatever it is that they have chosen however they don't matter to you and you don't matter to them anymore there's no even within the family members is that it's it's like either they will start to um not not even bother to talk to you or they would not even bother to try to convince you they would just you know say oh yeah he like he or she is like that so they would just you know throw their hands up and and leave you alone so that is what i mean by you would be able to have your own experience if you know that you you are actually the one that's creating your own reality and each time you choose your own reality you move into a different hologram and you actually re print you repopulate all of your the people that you still interact with in the in there and it would be the the version of them that fits in with your vibration at the time and they will interact with you according to that and the more you are able to integrate within yourself your own chosen reality how you want to experience life the more you can let go of the um the the unconscious mind controlled behavior that's still within you that you, because it's so deeply mind controlled that you don't even see that it's it's still in there and until you have you know let go of all of those then you would be actually be free to pop out into completely new reality that is 100% according to what it is that you want to see so that is really what i want to leave with all of you is that yes there we are being mind controlled and and yes but even within that we can still manifest for ourselves if we start to really look at um try to really look at and start to find the real you and start to honor and start to pay attention to what really is is the real you not the the mind controlled version of you 
So, and that is a step-by-step um, -step process. And with that is the all of what I would like to say this evening. So let's